the lights in the sky, and how they were used by man. Gaze into the skies and let the adventure begin. Intrigued by lights in the sky, mankind has tried for thousands of years to unravel the mysteries that lie above us. There are written records from ancient civilizations that show man's attempts to both understand and explain the wonders seen by day and night. Through the ages, records were kept by astronomers who wrote down their findings. Some of these astronomers made discoveries that became part of history. As technology has advanced, so has man's ability to study the heavens. Ideas that were formed thousands of years ago are still being explored today. Although many ideas have been proven true or false, and changes in beliefs have been fairly routine, one thing has remained constant. Man's fascination with space and its unreachable bodies in motion. Long ago, people noticed that some stars in the sky moved around while others did not. The wandering stars, now known as planets, were considered to be very special. So special, in fact, that they were given the names of all-powerful gods. For example, Mars, Mercury, and Jupiter were all names of ancient gods. Studying these objects in the sky was something like studying God, so priests were given the job of following and evaluating the stars. One ancient group of people, the Phoenicians, did not bother with studying stars. They merely worshipped the shining lights. In most cultures, however, priests took the job of watching the sky quite seriously as a learning experience. As they watched the daily changes, patterns began to emerge. By noticing the world around them in relation to these patterns, priests started making accurate predictions concerning what would occur in the sky. They also used these predictions to mark changes in the seasons. Movement in the sky is predictable because it occurs in cycles. Early civilizations used these cycles to create simple calendars. There have been complete calendars found that date back to 2000 BC. The calendars were based on phases of the moon. For these people, each day began when the sun went down. When priests noticed a young crescent moon low in the western sky, they decreed that a month had passed. This gave each month 29 or 30 days, which comes amazingly close to our calendars of today. In South America, the Inca Indians also formed a calendar. Like other cultures, the Inca based their calendar on the moon. However, the Incas did not rely on the moon's different phases. Instead, they watched the moon's movements as it passed among the stars. This gave their calendar months that had either 27 or 28 days. During their studies to create a calendar, priests developed one of the earliest skills in astronomy. They learned to predict eclipses. By following the cycles of the sun and moon, priests were able to forecast when the moon would fall between the earth and the sun. This would be a solar eclipse. When Earth was between the Sun and the Moon, they knew a lunar eclipse, an eclipse of the Moon, would occur. Records as far back as 4000 BC relate Chinese calculations of eclipses. Emperors and other leaders were as fascinated with astronomy as the priests. In 2608 BC, Chinese Emperor Hang Tai had an observatory built to help study the skies. Even these early people realized that the cycles of the heavens affected their lives. Crops, water supplies, and weather were all tied to these cycles. Other people, such as Egyptians and Babylonians, were also creating calendars based on the movements of the stars. These civilizations were located around what is now Iraq and Syria, and were the first to leave written records.